Welcome to Night Hacking at the JFocus conference. My name's Steven Chin. I'm the Java Community Manager, and I'm joined by Vinicius and Yara Sanger from Brazil. How are you guys doing? Very good. Great experience at the 10th anniversary of JFocus. Glad to be here. Thank you. So I, I see you guys brought some of the Brazilian weather for this time of year in Sweden. It's very warm. Sure. Why not to have a little bit of sun here, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you guys, you guys have been working on IoT stuff for a while. Um, I remember you always have a big, a big bag of devices and interesting toys with you whenever you go. That's true. The first project we did was for our home automation. You remember 2011? We did the J Home automation. Yeah, yeah. And once we we did that project, we start looking that we would like to do more than home automation. And we start talking about things automation before uh, coming the Internet of Things wave. So um, we were kind of lucky to be, to be in that spot at that time. And uh, actually, we started with kind of embedded an IoT using the old and gold Sunspot device. So oh, yeah, yeah, the Sunspots were awesome. Awesome. So but it's interesting to see the trends the, and how Internet of Things is growing and, uh, and what's the size of the market it will achieve in the next years. So in 2011, we would never imagine that it would be so big. It was lots of passion, lots of interesting things to do, but uh, we would never imagine it would be so big. Yeah, no, I mean, <coughs> the number of devices and companies jumping on and building big data infrastructure to support the data coming from those devices and the whole um, kind of change in the industry is amazing. Yeah, the people ask uh, that many companies are looking for uh, Internet of Things opportunities, but actually Internet of Things is already uh, happening all around the world. If you look uh, in Brazil, we have many farms and they monitor, and it's not this year, many years they are monitoring the, the, the counts uh, using the internet infrastructure, using Zigbee's. Uh, if you look at the machine to machine computing, yeah. the payment system is a kind of internet of things that already happened. So internet of things is, is happening all around the world. You don't need to look for opportunities. Actually, the opportunities is everywhere. Yeah, so that makes sense. So what what do you guys have over over here? Am I jumping ahead? Yeah, so uh, this is the IoT surfboard. Let me let me put that up on the big screen. Okay. Yeah, there we go. IoT surfboard. IoT surfboard. This is a, a device, aggregator device that we can use to explore the Internet of Things without the need of soldering, using breadboard. So it's very nice for uh, developers that never had any kind of contact with electronic stuff. And uh, so it's a very fast way to start playing with uh, Internet of Things. We have many sensors, uh, we have uh, different types of actuators. Yeah, okay, so this, this looks like a lot of fun. So this at the end here, is this a potentiometer? Potentiometer, we have a Zigbee connector, Wi-Fi connector, Bluetooth. Yeah, here's the Zigbee. Zigbee, That's Zigbee and Wi-Fi, right? You have and a new Wi-Fi wi module. You can choose between Zigbee, Wi-Fi, or Bluetooth. So we have many different types of combinations. And then this is a relay? A relay. So you can hook up like... Um, Appliances or different things to power them. That's true. Turn we, them on and off. We have transistors for doing robotics or driving motors or even driving a step motor is possible here. So you can prototype like 3D printing uh, machines using this. And board. then is, is this guy an infrared sensor on here? Infrared sensor infrared is sensor. very useful for home automation because infrared is everywhere. If you, if you want to show here, we have an image that shows oh, oh. everything. I'm, I'm looking at the little tiny board and nobody can see it. That was rude of me. Okay. How yes. about... Boop. There we go. Here we go. So uh, here we have the temperature sensor, humidity sensor. We have the potentiometer. We have the gas sensor here. We used to play a lot with alcohol sensor. <laughs> so with this board, you can make like a breathalyzer connects to the cloud and if it detected that someone drink it can tweet or something 
Um, more we more have likely, you like Twitcher. <laughs> I, I reached 0 0.09. That's I, true, like a, a beer competition or yeah. something. And we have the real-time clock. Real-time clock is very important. Uh, we, we plan at this board in the way that you can integrate the IoT surfboard with other boards like Raspberry Pi, Intel Edson, Big O' Bone Black. And IoT surfboard is very low energy consumption. But you cannot take a picture using this board because it's, it's very uh, low power of processor. Yeah. But IoT surfboard can be integrated with Raspberry Pi and like you can schedule the IoT surfboard to, to turn on any other device, more powerful device like Raspberry Pi, take the picture and then turn off. So you can make a really good smart energy system uh, using this how nice much, combination. How much power does the IoT surfboard draw by itself? Uh, like if you are not using alcohol sensor because it consumes a lot, it will be around like a 100 mile amps or less, yeah, even yeah, less. Yeah. So very little. Very low, very low, very low. You can run on USB cable easy. Yeah, I mean, USB gives 500, so Five, that's... 500, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. enough. Even for, for the alcohol sensor, you can drive using the, the, the USB. So 100 is when you are really doing something inside uh, IoT surfboard. Got it. But one thing we have learned, this is the second board we have uh, developed into production. And uh, when we developed our first board, there was no Raspberry Pi. There was no that, that many boards with Linux and all that. So when we designed this new board, our, our first learning point was we don't know the future, even the near future, what yeah. will be in the market in the next two months, what will be in the market in the next one month. So we developed this board to not compete with any existing board, not competing with Intel, with Raspberry Pi, with Udo board, or any other. Yeah, so it looks like it has lots of expansion and you know you can really take full advantage of the chip. Exactly, yes. exactly. And and another thing was uh, we were not responsible for the the, the Linux part, right? It's just an aggregated board. Uh, All right, so I'm, I'm curious for the the circuit board layout. What program did you use? Eagle. 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 Oh, nice. This is a four layers board. Uh, with SMD, it's very compact. You can see that all the components is very, very, uh, uh, you know, tight. And uh, it was a very nice job from our engineer. I used to make the prototypes. I am a Java developer like most <laughs> of the people. But I learned a lot of electronics in the last seven or eight years. But when you are doing this kind of board, you are not, uh, uh, it's not, uh, a play, you, you, you really need to make something strong. When you have analog sensors, you need to take care. Oh, yeah, so you don't want interference between the different analog lines. That's true, that's yeah. true. So we have a very good engineer in Brazil, actually many good uh, electronic engineers in Brazil, and he did an amazing job. It's yeah, just see, 10 at, centimeters. At one time, I actually I got a degree in electrical computer engineering, and um, I haven't used it, <laughs> <laughs> but I remember doing layouts of um, chips and other stuff, and that was that was a lot of work. Yeah, that's true. And uh, another thing, when we were developing this board, one thing we got in mind was we would like to uh, empower developers so they can come to the Internet of Things. And what would be the bigger barriers to developers to come to the Internet of Things? One would be uh, understanding everything that is inside the board, how the pins work and uh, how the interruptions, and it's a different way to program that. So first we created a, a board that has multi-modes, so you can interact with the board with uh, several pre-programmed uh, modes. Yeah. So when you get it out of the box, you already have a button here, and when you press the button, it will change modes so for people that are used to Arduino, people know that you only have one sketch per time. And here, you can have five, six, or even 10 different sketches. Yeah, okay. so, so it makes it easy. And it, does it come with a bunch of sketches preloaded on it? Yeah, so okay. when you just unbox it and you press the button, it's ready to play. Cool. So that's your first experience. Then the second, the second step for a developer would be just inter uh, interact with it through command line. 
So a very simple protocol, a text-based protocol, where you have, you know, red, green. So you just activate it to, to uh, 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 strings, right? Yeah. You just type those strings. Then the second thing is, you know, if uh, sometimes if we cannot fit Java into Arduino, what about making our Arduino code looks like Java? So that would make Java developers life easier. So we created uh, an uh, API. No, for this one, we created an API that uh, makes the Arduino programming really similar to Java. So yeah. you know, board.relay, board.speaker, board.red. So when the, dev the Java developer needs to touch the C code on Arduino, it would feel like home, right, with the same methods. And, uh, and third, and finally, home sweet home, how do you have your Java API to access all the surfboards functionalities? So the same API we have for Arduino, we have implemented on the Java layer. Okay. So you get your board, you connect to Serial, and then you start playing with all the sensors. If a regular developer just gets his, his code and circuits and start to using a sensor, how it is, how it is, what's the serial protocol and all that. So very simple uh, Java API to make developers to push their things to the cloud, to MQTT or, or all technologies without uh, hiding a little bit the complexity. Yeah, of, uh, there's the alcohol sensor you can print out how drunk you yeah, are. Yeah, 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 that's <laughs> true. And what we did also was a, a kind of dual, uh, uh, here we go. We have two different uh, controllers. One is Arduino Nano, but yeah. we are not locked into the Arduino Nano. We are using the Arduino Nano today, but tomorrow we may change the Arduino Nano for Intel Edison, you yeah. know? So we can really change. We are not locked in any kind of processor technology or system on chip. So we have the Arduino here, and we have this another guy we are factoring in Brazil. Hmm. This is the Wi-Fi module. So very, oh. very small. And uh, the good thing about the, the Wi-Fi module is that we can, we can, in terms of business perspective, we can preload the Wi-Fi module to make it cloud enable. Like we can have the Wi-Fi module for Oracle Cloud. Yeah. We can have the Wi-Fi module for any cloud, like ThingSpeak or EFTTT or better, using the same concept, concept of multi-mode, we can press the button and switch between different cloud providers. Like you press the button, it's publishing on Amazon. You press the button again, yeah. it's using the Oracle Cloud. So we, we have a, this nice combination between the microcontroller and the Wi-Fi module, which is the, this Wi-Fi is very popular all around the world, the ESP8266. Cool. And with that combination, you can go to the cloud using pure REST protocol, pure MQTT, or using any kind of uh, internet, uh, uh, cloud, internet of Things cloud provider, uh, like you have IBM, Oracle, Amazon, Microsoft. So it's very nice to see that we created a platform. It's not just a board. Yeah. We have the, the, the board, we have the, all the support for uh, connecting your board to the cloud. We have APIs for Minecraft. So you can do, you can do integration between the IoT surfboard and Minecraft. Oh. What we are doing is using the humidity sensor. If the humidity increases, it starts yeah. raining in the Minecraft. Oh. <laughs> and you can use levers in Minecraft to control house appliances. So you can turn on the lamp in Minecraft and you really turn on the lamp in your house. Nice. So it's a very nice kind of integration for inspiring kids and to show uh, uh, how to start programming using the physical world. Yeah. That's great to see the, when you are teaching uh, Java for the people and you do hello world, you don't have any kind, it's, it's nice, but it's not something that the people are amazed at. Oh, why, hello world, no, but when you do a hello world using this kind of guy and you turn on the lamp in your house, you, yeah, that's, wow, that's the impact pretty cool. is amazing.
Okay, so that was a good overview of the IoT surfboard and what you guys are, are doing with this technology. So what's your plans at the conference here? So you already did a workshop. Yes, we did this workshop uh, with around 30 people and it was amazing to see everybody, you know, having their first reaction, turning, you know, controlling things and interaction with IoT. Uh, I really hope to see more and more developers getting engaged, not just for doing their hello world, but especially to bring their uh, projects to real life. And uh, tomorrow morning, just after the party, yeah. we have our talk, 9 a.m., showing <laughs> lots of... Uh, uh, That's a good, a, good, a good opportunity to use maybe, the alcohol sensor. <laughs> maybe some people will still be here from the party, <laughs> not quite kicked out the door yet, and they can come and, you know, yeah, that's true. But uh, tomorrow we'll be focusing more on using uh, advanced components like cameras and voice recognition, text-to-speech, and more human interaction with the Internet of Things. Sometimes we focus more on M2M, on machine-to-machine, yeah, -machine, yeah. and tomorrow we'll be focusing more on the human interaction with this cool project. And alternate ways, not just by typing, but uh, by hanging, by... Uh, Smiling, turning on a lamp with your smile. Yeah, yeah, facial recognition. Face recognition. That we are using cool. Intel RealSense uh, with uh, uh, application using MQTT. Yeah. So we connect the camera and your uh, face recognition and we send MQTT messages to our gateway running on IoT surfboard so you can use your face uh, expression to control the things <laughs> in your house. <laughs> cool. And uh, we have, we, we have see, we, we see each day more examples of real world IoT projects. Some of them with marketing proposals, getting awards and all that. So like the tweet P deepers that uh, tweets when uh, the, 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 the humidity level enhances, but also lots of projects associated to agriculture, to healthcare. healthcare, and we have more and more components available for people to create their own project. Yeah. Yara's grandfather, yeah. he is working on a, a, a called a brain care. Is a, a intracranial, uh, intracranial uh, pressure measurement. So how to measure the pressure inside the brain for people that has microcephalia or any other, you know, an, a car accident Hydrosy. and uh, and uh, things like that. So, you know, it's a... In a non-invasive way, that's a very hard thing yeah, to do. Yeah. And he, 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 he designed a device, Yara's grandfather, he's amazing. Uh, uh, he many, many projects all around the world and he's a, a, a strap connected to the internet to measure intracranial pressure. Oh, okay. They are doing so that in Brazil. Can be like an early warning measurement? Yeah, that yes. you can get continuous monitoring yeah, from. Yeah, actually, he based it on a Mexican instrument uh, for measuring that. So, uh, uh, like the reverbing uh, instrument and the wave, and he used many uh, 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 Fourier transforming. Yeah. And, and uh, amazing project. Wow. Uh, changing life device project. That's that's uh, uh, what I, I I like to say. I like to call this kind of project as changing life device, devices that will make our life better. Cool. All right, well, thank you guys. Thank you, Steve. Very thank much you. for thank joining me on stage at the JFocus conference for interviews. Okay. Thank you. Thank um, you. you can join us at the next break. I believe it's 1.50 when we're going to have our next interview. And I hope you watch the rest of the um, streams at nighthacking.com. So thank you, guys. Ooh.